Today we have got the brand new Mac Mini Pro M2. And I'm gonna be stacking it up to my Mac Studio Ultra M1 to see how they compare in video editing performance to hopefully help you decide if the speed of the Mac Mini Pro M2 is enough for your editing needs or if you need to shell out the extra cash to get a studio. Now the specs on the Mac Studio Ultra are as follows, 20 core CPU, 64 core GPU, 64 gigs of RAM, and four terabytes of SSD storage. And this computer is what I've been using for the past year to handle all my video editing. And it's done really well, but I realized that it's out of budget for most video editors. So I wanted to see if this Mac Mini Pro could get the job done for a third of the price. And specs on the Mac Mini Pro are as follows, 10 core CPU, 16 core GPU, 32 gigs of RAM, and one terabyte of SSD. And I get asked often if 16 gigs of RAM is enough for video editing, just on these simple tests alone that we did today. While playing back 8K RED footage, Premiere Pro was taking up 10 gigs of RAM, plus everything else on my computer running in the background, so I was already up to 20 gigabytes. So 32 gigs of RAM, in my opinion, is a minimum. Before we dive into the editing speeds though, first some overall thoughts about the functionality between these two. The footprint is basically the same on both, but the height is about two and a half inches taller on the Mac Studio. So the Mac Mini Pro is gonna look a lot sleeker sitting on a desk and will more easily be able to fit under a computer monitor, but both of these are very low profile. The Studio is just gonna look a little boxier. As far as ports go, one of the biggest differences between the Mac Minis and the Mac Mini Pros is that the Pros give you two extra USB-C Thunderbolt 4 ports. That was one of my biggest slams on the Mac Minis when I reviewed the M1 version, as I just feel like I was constantly running out of ports. So the Mac Mini Pros give you four USB-C ports, two USB ports, an HDMI 2.1, Ethernet, and a headphone jack. The Mac Studio gives you basically the same on the back, but on the front, it gives you two more USB-C ports and an SD card reader. And I actually use these front ports and SD card reader every day. They're way more convenient than having to look around the back to plug something in. So that's the biggest difference functionality-wise. But with the additional two USB-C ports on these Mini Pros, I think this makes way more sense as a professional computer option. This now gives it one more USB-C port than the MacBook Pro and two more USBs since the MacBook Pro doesn't have any USBs, but it does have a card reader. So it's too bad they didn't include a card reader on these mini pros. I feel like they could have put one in on the front, maybe next year. Now, the only other functionality aspect I care about is fan noise levels, and they're both super quiet. I've never noticed the fan noise from either one, though the Mini Pro is slightly quieter than the Studio. As for editing speeds, we'll be running these tests with the Sony a7S III 4K S-Log3 file, a Canon R7 IPB 4K file, a C70 120 frame per second 4K file, and a Red Raptor 8K RAW file, so that you can see how they each perform on a variety of codecs. We'll also be running these tests in Premiere Pro since that's what I use use and what is most popularly used. However, to see how the Mac Studio Ultra performs on different editing softwares, make sure to check out my MacBook Pro versus Mac Studio video that I did last year. My consensus was that different softwares will handle different codecs differently. So depending on which camera footage you edit with will depend on which software will perform optimally. But as far as comparing these two computers to each other, you'll get the idea about how their speeds compare just by showing you the results in Premiere. And speaking of different kinds of footage, this video is sponsored by Storyblocks. They are my go-to site that I've been using for years now for all of my stock footage needs. Anytime I need B-roll for my tutorials, client projects, or social media posts, I can always find what I need at Storyblocks as they have over a million 4K and HD royalty-free video clips to choose from, and they're regularly adding more based on in-demand keywords. You also get unlimited downloads and simple licensing without any extra fees with their flexible subscriptions. That's my favorite part is I don't have to license individual clips. I just download as many as I want. I also frequently use their pre-made motion graphic templates to increase the production quality of my videos and streamline my creative process with minimal time and effort. So as a longtime subscriber, I can highly recommend their service and you can learn more by clicking the link in the description below or going to storyblocks.com Parker. But let's now jump into our first test and that is opening up Premiere Pro. I wanted to see if there's any speed increase on simple tasks from the M1 to the M2 chip. The Mac Mini Pro M2 did it in seven seconds and the Mac Studio did it a tad slower at seven and a half seconds. So slight advantage to the M2 chip, but really nothing noticeable. 
Our next test is playback smoothness. At full resolution, both machines handled the A7S III and R7 footage perfectly, but the Mini Pro had a few dropped frames on both the C70 and RED footage, whereas the Mac Studio didn't drop any frames. Once I dropped the Mini Pro down to half resolution though, it played back the C70 and RED without any dropped frames. And keep in mind, all these clips have color correction applied to make it more realistic, but both did a good job at playing back, though the Mac Studio did show a slight advantage here with the heavier footage. Next test I like to run is scrubbing through the footage at full resolution. Again, both machines performed pretty similarly. They each seem to scrub through all the clips pretty flawlessly, except for the C70 clips, they'd both get hung up a tad. The Mini Pro had a little more trouble on the C70 clips than the Mac Studio, but this scrubbing difference was more noticeable when stacking all the clips on top of each other. The Studio can handle scrubbing pretty well at full resolution, but the Mini Pro needed to be put down to half resolution for decent scrubbing. So again, advantage to the Mac Studio in those heavier situations. The next test we did was a applying an effect like warp stabilizer. First, I stabilized a three second clip from the R7 and the Mini Pro did it in one minute and 40 seconds, but the Mac Studio took over four minutes. This seemed kind of fluky to me, so I tried stabilizing a three second clip from the RED and this time the Mini Pro did it in four minutes and 40 seconds and the Studio did it in four minutes and 10 seconds. So about 12% faster for the studio. So two very different results here. As you can see, it completely depends on what footage you're working with. Different softwares on different computers will do better or worse. Next test was rendering speeds. Again, we had a mixed bag here. First, I rendered a 10 second clip from the red footage and the Mini Pro did it in 35 seconds and the studio did it in 28 seconds. So about 25% faster on the Mac Studio. Then I rendered one minute of mixed clips and the results seemed similar to the previous render test until we got to the C7 clip and the Mini Pro had a spaz attack. The Mac Studio rendered everything in 20 seconds and the Mini Pro took one minute and 40 seconds. Just could not get through that C70 footage for whatever reason. So in that test, the Mac Studio was five times faster. So again, it just depends what footage you use, but safe to say that overall, the studio is gonna be rendering faster for you. Next test was exporting speeds. I exported out one minute of each of these different types of clips to 1080p H.264, and the results were as follows. The A7S III on the Mini Pro exported in 17 seconds versus just seven seconds on the Mac Studio, so two and a half times faster for the studio. And then one minute of R7 footage was 14 seconds on the Mini Pro and seven seconds on the Mac Studio, so two times faster for the studio. And then one minute of C70 footage took 22 seconds on the Mini Pro and just eight seconds on the studio, so almost three times faster. And again, for whatever reason, the Mini Pro seems to struggle the most with the C70 codec. We actually saw this last year with the Studio Ultra. It didn't do well with C70 footage either, but I believe that's because Premiere Pro hadn't been optimized yet to take advantage of the new Ultra chip because now it deals much better with C70 footage. So I would bet Premiere Pro just needs a few months to optimize for these new M2 chips as well. Because next we exported out one minute of red 8K footage and it took 66 seconds on the Mini Pro and 60 seconds on the Mac Studio. So only about 10% faster for the studio. So again, different machines will react differently to different types of footage. And just for reference, I exported out all the clips on my MacBook Pro Max M1 as well. And here were the results. Basically, the MacBook sits somewhere in between between the two except with red footage, it performed slightly better than the Mac Studio. Not sure why the studio struggled to export the red clip, but for those wondering where the MacBook Pro sits, it's gonna be sitting somewhere between the middle of the Mac Pro and Mac Studio. So kind of some wonky test results in there, but as far as exporting speeds, you'll usually see about two times faster results from the Mac Studio. And overall, you'll just have a smoother editing experience with the better playback and scrubbing in heavier situations. But is it worth paying two to three times times more money. For those exporting out hour-long podcasts, maybe. But if long export times aren't holding your workflow back, then I think the Mini Pro is a great editing machine for most creators at a much more affordable price. So in summary, which computer should you buy for video editing and which specs should you upgrade to? For me, where I edit a lot of RED and C70 footage and work in heavy complex timelines, the extra power of the Studio Ultra saves me quite a bit of time and frustration, so it's worth the extra cash. But the Mini Pro could definitely get the job done if I needed it to. But the specs I'd recommend getting on the Studio Ultra is that I wouldn't recommend upgrading the GPU like I did, especially for Premiere Pro where it's more CPU heavy. I'd just keep that on the base level. 
and the base of 64 gigs of RAM has worked great for me. And I have four terabytes of storage and I do use all of it so that I can store more of my files locally, but you may not need that much. And then the Mac Mini Pro M2, I think this packs plenty of power for most beginner to mid-level video editors working with normal 4K codecs like Sony and Canon mirrorless cameras. I would have no problem using this as my main computer for all the work that I do. It would just take a little bit longer. But until now, the Mac Mini series always fell just a tad short for me to be recommending it to pros. But with this new pro version, I think it's a great, well-priced pro video editing machine. And as far as specs that I recommend, I definitely get the Pro over the regular minis as you get the extra USB-C ports, which I think are a must for professionals and obviously give you the extra power as well. And I think leaving this at the base of 10 cores like I did is plenty for most. But as already mentioned, I would upgrade to 32 gigs of RAM. And I personally think 512 gigabytes is too little. I've owned computers with only 512 and I'm always fighting for extra space. So I'd recommend at least one terabyte. But what about the Mac Pro Max M1 versus the new M2. If you already own the M1, I don't think it's worth upgrading. There's not a significant enough of a difference, so I won't be upgrading. But if you don't own the M1, then the M2 is gonna be getting pretty close to the speed of the Mac Studio Ultra. So I'd probably still give my overall vote to the MacBook Pro Max M2 due to its portability factor. But for the money, best bang for buck, this Mac Mini Pro M2 is my new top pick and what I will be recommending to beginner and intermediate video editors. So there you have my overall thoughts and tests. Hopefully this was helpful for you. For more buying guide recommendations on computer and camera equipment, make sure to check out our Ultimate Online Film School Full-Time Filmmaker, where we have over 600 tutorials and counting. Lastly, don't forget to subscribe for more content just like this. And if you have any further questions, please let me know.